immigrant, Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not funny, but the, the reason I'm laughing is because I didn't think anybody would actually say it. But this guy did with his nice looking funny hat, nice set of teeth, smiley. He said it. I like people like this that can say exactly what they're thinking, even if it's the wrong thing. <laughs> but let's let's get right into it. <laughs> what is that? It? The first word I think about when I hear the word immigrant is the word empathy, because I feel that Why? that's the only thing that we need when dealing with issues of immigration in our country. The first thing. Okay, I disagree. What? What do you mean is the only thing? Like, empathy is good. Empathy is great. But that's the only thing? The only thing you have to think about when dealing with immigration? Empathy? You know, not all immigrants, again, are great immigrants. I'm great. A lot of us are. but Some immigrants are not. And some immigrants are great, but they come in here to spend their money, you know, rich politicians from African countries or Asian countries, you know, billionaires' children, they come in here to have, you know, uh, to spend money that was embezzled from back home. Why would you have empathy for those? So you can't have a blanket empathy for everybody. Not everybody comes here that is running from something. Some people come here running towards something. The thing that comes to mind is someone foreign. Um... Not necessarily, there's still somebody that, you know, just like you, it's just they come from a different place. That is the accurate definition of immigrant. Foreigner. Foreigner, foreigner that has come to stay, actually. Because there's foreigners that, there are foreigners that have just come in to visit. Those are not immigrants. Foreigner that has come to stay and take your jobs. <laughs> foreigner that is coming for your jobs. <laughs> That's I'm kidding. <laughs> it's coming for your uh, McDonald's flipping burgers jobs. The one word I think of when I hear the word immigrant is sadness. What? People just say what sadness? Because immigrants are people who want to leave their country to find a better life. I could never leave my country. Yeah, you, you definitely don't want to leave your country. It's the greatest country in the world. Why would you leave it? But still, sadness? Not all, again, I said it before. I don't want to sound like a a, a broken clock. Or, but When I say the word immigrant, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is illegal immigrant. Um, Ooh. Uh, it's a, definitely a negative negative. Uh, meaning to the word immigrant. The first. Now we're getting into the meats, the needs and greedies of it all. Illegal, that word, illegal immigrant. I'm not surprised that he thinks that because a lot of politicians now have um, started using the word immigrant and the word illegal immigrant interchangeably. And then so many Americans are not able to tell the difference. When they see, when they hear immigrant, they think um, uh, uh, an illegal immigrant from Venezuela or Mexico. They're never thinking, oh, that 21-year-old Chinese kid who is in Yale or Harvard. They're not thinking about that, that uh, Dubai prince who is living in the U.S. They are not thinking about that soccer player, uh, Lionel Messi, who is now living and working in the United States. They're not thinking about those immigrants. Those are all immigrants, by the way. So when we talk about immigrant, the, if, if the first thing that comes to your mind is illegal immigrant, then just know you have been, I don't want to say brainwashed, but actually, yes, that's not the word. You, you know, you've played into the hands of you know, the, the political agendas of these people where they want you to look at every immigrant and think you don't deserve to be here. Go back to where you're coming from. The, you know, the government creates these problems, blames them on immigrants and diverts your attention from them doing terrible things to these immigrants. And now that's all you can focus your attention on and blame the immigrants for all your problems. 
even though these problems existed before immigration and will continue to exist after immigration because Americans are terrible voters. We vote based on emotions, really based solely on emotions. We don't look at uh, what's going to affect this country tomorrow. What kind of laws are we passing? thing that comes to mind right now is there was a nationalization ceremony in the courthouse that I am currently facing. And I think of a lot of people who maybe speak English as a second language a heck of a lot better than I speak whatever language they speak as a first language or as a second language. American. Uh, all right. So many things to unpack there. First thing, naturalization ceremony. If you don't know what that is, I'll tell you really quickly. It's a ceremony where non-citizens become citizens. Naturalization. That's what I mean. That's what, that's what that means. And usually you have to be in the country at least five years as a permanent resident with a green card before you're eligible to become a citizen. You have to take a citizenship test, go to an interview, have no criminal record. There's so many things that you have to go, so many hopes to become a citizen. I know I did. Um, I don't want to go into the details because this is not that kind of video. But the second thing to unpack there, the language thing, English language. So America does not have an official language, right? Um, the most spoken languages in the U.S. is English language and Spanish. Um, a lot of immigrants happen to speak multiple languages. I, I know I do. Uh, but the reason is not because they're so much smarter or anything like that. It has to do with culture. Like we grew up in a culture where you speak your native language at home, like me. And then when you go to school, you speak one of the, you know, colonial languages like English, French, Spanish, Portuguese, depending on the African country you're, you're, you're from or some or any other country that is not a European country speaks some kind of European language um, that was inherited after, you know, colonization. And so we tend to speak these multiple languages, not because we choose to or we just love languages. No, that's how you grow up. It becomes a necessity. It's almost like breathing you know you just do it because that's what you grew up in um i think of somebody who is not american i think yet who is not american yet we're coming for you and your jobs <laughs> i'm joking though ah, i'm joking ah, the only job that we're taking is the jobs that you don't want you don't want to we'll manage it there eh? hard working <laughs> actually uh for example, I think Mexicans yes. are some of the hardest working people here. Mm -hmm. Mex <laughs> and he looks Mexican. Um, no, he looks Hispanic. <laughs> he said Mexican. But yeah, it's true what he said. Um, immigrants tend to appear to be more hardworking, which is because, again, based on the different mindsets and the goals that we have, we come in, you know, thinking, hey, we're coming here to make a better life and take care of our ourselves our families back home and our families here right uh, a lot of africans are very we, we have extended families right We're, we don't just uh we don't subscribe to the nuclear family structure we usually have you know if i see my brother it could be my third cousin and i still my brother and i still send them you know money once in a while so we tend to have to work harder multiple even though i don't really believe that we should be working harder i think we should be working smarter but we grew up learning that we work. You when you work hard, you get reward. So that's all that we are, we know how to do. Work hard. So we come in here. You know, the employer tells you to show up at four four a.m. You show up at three thirty, and you know, that's it. You work as hard as you can so that the next time you know something is available, you know they're looking to you as that guy. You know, I know a guy. It's usually a Mexican. You know, some immigrant. Because they're going to do the job with all their hearts and minds and soul. And again, they are not taking your jobs. Because these jobs are the jobs that you don't want to do. For how much ever they're paying. Chinese people. <laughs> I think of Americans. Because Americans are a people composed of different ethnicities, different cultures. From all walks of life. Mm. That all have come to this land on one piece of the same land shared by the entire world. So this is a good representation of the entire earth, if you really think about it. Yes. Absolutely. You don't even have to think about it. America is absolutely the most diverse country in the world. Most diverse country in the world. No argument. Every time somebody tells me, oh, America is so racist. I'm like, wow, really? How come everybody's trying to come here? 
how come every minority or all kinds of races are trying to come here if America is that racist? Is there racism in America? Absolutely. Is there racism in every country in the world? Absolutely. Are there worse things than racism? Absolutely. Yes. I grew up to way more discrimination than I've experienced in this country. Where I was born, I experienced a lot more discrimination. And we all look the same. Human beings are inherently bad people. We are inherently discriminatory. We like birds of, a feather, uh, birds of the same feather uh, will flock together. Right? So that means if you lock 20 white men in a room for three months and come back, they'll find something to create camps. Oh, you don't have blue eyes. Oh, you're short. They will find something to discriminate against each other with. That's pretty much how I grew up. I grew up in a, in a in Cameroon, a country that has over 250 ethnic groups. Do you think that there was some kind of discrimination based on where you're coming from, based on your last name? Absolutely. You apply for a job and you're told, hey, you're not from the BT tribe. You're not getting it, right? You don't speak French. You speak English instead. You're not getting it because English is the minority uh, part of the country, right? Or... Simple things like, oh, you're not light-skinned. Like, there's so many things that people will find a way to discriminate against you. About. So it's, it's not inherently just like racism is like the only kind of discrimination. The only, it was easier in America because people, again, found something common, and that was how they looked. But if everybody in America looked the same, we would still be equally bad because we would find other things to discriminate. Ageism, you know, would discriminate based on age, based on eye color. Uh, based on levels of education, based on dressing, based on neighborhood, based on family ties. So many reasons to discriminate. So that's who we are. That's why that's who human beings are. We're going to discriminate. There's no getting rid of discrimination. That's just it. There's no getting rid of it. You have to get rid of the human nature. As the presidential race heats up, oh. there's a whole lot of noise out there about... Um, yeah, there's always noise around uh, presidential elections. Uh, Americans are very bad voters. You, you guys vote based on your opinion. A bit, sorry, based on your emotion. Vote very correctly this election. I don't want to hear noise. Anyways, that was it. Um, 